Welcome to another episode of Trash Talk with Lisa and Paula. I'm Lisa Beyer, CAT TV Executive Director, and this is Paula. I'm Paula Camperman, the Outreach Program Manager for the Bennington County Solid Waste Alliance. And I know you wanted to just uh, refer back to our last episode and then work into what we're going to be talking about today which is composting right and this is in response to the uh, vermont's recycling laws act 148 in which the final layer of the law includes having everyone divert their food scraps as of july 1st 2020. so in our last segment we talked about the vermont food uh, recovery hierarchy which is talking about the best use highest and best use of food which is first reduce the amount of consumption whenever possible, make then the next layer, uh, the next level of food for people, then the next level of food brought down for animals, and then the next level being composting and anaerobic digestion, and then uh, energy recovery. So today we're gonna talk about composting. And that's actually several different things. Composting involves uh, diverting food scraps from the landfills. Now that could be done several different ways. You can compost in your backyard, you can take your food scraps to a transfer station, and you can take your food scraps to a neighbor who either has chickens or a farmer that has um, livestock that would benefit from them. So there's a number of different ways you can keep the food scraps out of the landfill. Today we're going to talk about the yeah. benefits. And I was just, I, I, I think it's interesting. Um, I certainly didn't know that you could bring um, your food scraps to the transfer station here in Bennington right now. Yes, all transfer stations will take food scraps back now. So you can take them, uh, just bring a bucket and you can just dump it in a pile and um, they're happy to take that. As so that's a great to know because with this law coming up, you you know I'm thinking well I live in town. Am I going to really have to have a composting bin, and what am I going to do with it afterwards? So I think that that's a great um, piece of knowledge that people probably didn't know. Yes, and if you live in a, a multifamily dwelling of four units or more, uh, the commercial haulers that come to pick up your waste and your recycling will also pick up your composting because they're mandated by law to do that. Oh. Um, in the last legislative session, the um, waste haulers were able to have the law tweaked a bit to not require them to pick up uh, food scraps from single family residences because mm -hmm. it was just too onerous, too uh, cost prohibitive to do that. So it's now put the emphasis on single family households to divert right. their scraps on their own. There is right. no pickup. Okay. I'm hoping that maybe at some point we can get something together maybe in having some um, neighborhood pickup sites. Mm -hmm. I have to work that out, see what we can do to get either farmers or uh, waste haulers to participate in that, mm -hmm. maybe at a farmer's market so that it's something closer than having to schlep all the way to a transfer station. Because yeah. yeah. for some it's a very remote and a far reach. So Sure. Um, but I wanted to talk about some of the benefits of why, why, you, you know, why we compost anyway, because mm -hmm. really, statistically, about two-thirds of what we throw out can be diverted. So we've got to look for different ways to keep that, you know, the landfills from getting filled. We only have one landfill left, as I've said before, up in Coventry, Vermont, which is right on the Canadian border. So the transport co transportation cost to get food scraps all the way up there is just doesn't make sense. So we're building composting facilities throughout the state to help um, fill that need. Okay. And up until this point, larger food producers, institutions, manufacturers, you know, hospitals, schools have been diverting their food scraps up until this point. So now it's come down to the level of just John and Jane Doe. Okay. <laughs> you and me. Yeah. So, uh, so what we're doing is we're trying to, you know, divert that. Doing so will also keep the amount of methane production that's coming out of landfills because that's 25 times more toxic than CO2. So you want to try to divert about that from happening. So I was curious about that, um, that why do we have to compost? Because I would think that this stuff, this organic uh, material would decompose by itself anyways in the landfills and why is it a problem? And I was really interested to learn that that's not the case, that because of the environment that they're in with the other trash, it's not they're not composting. They're not yeah. able to biodegrade. True. Um, composting doesn't occur in a landfill. What happens is it's called anaerobic digestion, which is basically the absence of air and the microbes needed to do proper breakdown. So when you have 
food thrown in a landfill next to TVs, bicycles, refrigerators, you're not getting the bacteria and the that it needs yeah, to do and the nutrition. Health. So it doesn't it's have amazing. The, so what happens is you'll pull a carrot out, you know, it's been in there for ten years and it's black, but it's still a carrot. That, so it's not broken down at all. Right. So what we need to do is put it in an area that is, n you know, nutrient dense to get right. the enough um, air, moisture, microbes necessary to create that breakdown that will turn food back into good usable nutrition for plants and a soil amendment. It's, that I, I find that a very fascinating piece of information. And so when we do, go to compost, we're doing a lot of beneficial things for our planet because it diverts the material from the landfills. Mm -hmm. As we know, it's a very finite amount of space. Um, we save money in transportation costs. We're mm -hmm. not hauling it there. <clears throat> we improve the soil and plant structure of what the compost is later used for. Right. And it reduces um, the amount of water that's needed. Compost holds 20 times its weight in water when it's put on a surface. So it's becoming increasingly popular to use in road crews for um, soil amendment along shoulders for storm runoff, mm -hmm. and then also plantings for grass, uh, ground cover, because it holds it in place. It helps prevent um, soil erosion as well as drought because of the moisture. Yeah. And it also um, does good disease protection as well. It kind of keeps that down. Um, you also raise the awareness of recycling, because if you're composting, your neighbor's probably hearing about it, and right. people are doing the right thing. They understand the full life cycle of these plants that's coming from the ground and going back into the ground, and it's keeping us all healthy and, and our, our world in a better space. Um, we build community pride, and it helps create markets for the recycled material, being the compost. People can go and buy it, put it on their gardens, their lawns, right. um, house plants, and, and um, it's full use that way. Um, in fact, TAM has mm -hmm. its own composting facility here locally, and they sell it to nurseries and, and private companies that can use it on landscaping, and people can come and pick it up. Some things that we need to keep in mind is when we go to compost, you need to find a location, um, a container of sorts of where you're going to put your compost, mm -hmm. and the materials. So I can just briefly go into a process. I'm not going to go in line by line about everything there is to know about composting today, but just kind of touch on it. Yeah. So when you have um, your location, it can be anywhere in your backyard. It can be on a rooftop. I have a tumbler on top of a commercial rooftop in my home. Um, it can be a container in a closet, which I can explain to you later. Um, then your um, container can be anything which is pallets tied together to create four sides. Mm -hmm. It can be chicken wire. I know people that use that. It can be a tub. It can be a commercial material, plastic cone, a bin, a mm -hmm. tumbler, all different types of things. It can be a loose pile that's loosely organized in your backyard but is well covered. Um, factors that, that um, influence the composting process are really, you know, you've got to come together with understanding what types of materials go in the compost. Right. And I have a a brochure that I'd love everybody to know about, which is put, actually put out by the Addison, um, Addison um, Solid Waste District. And I can get you a copy of it if you want to contact me. I'll have my contact information at the end of this. And it uh, gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. But suffice to say, it also lists what goes in a compost bin and what doesn't. Which I think is really that's helpful. a huge, yeah. This is what I'm giving you instructions for is composting at home. If you're going to compost, meaning take your food scraps to a commercial facility, they can take many more things than what you can put in your okay. compost bin at home because the temperature is going to get a lot higher. It's well monitored, so they can get a hot composting process and a, a great breakdown. So they can take meat, bones, dairy, oils, you know, essentially all food scraps plus compostable um, single-use uh, items that you get at restaurants. But if you were doing that in your backyard, then you, the process wouldn't be hot enough to, in order to... Not unless you can get it big enough and you're really monitoring it. I mean, if you're... Most, most locations, no. Okay. Because um, you got to get it, you know, really hot and for uh, s uh, several days at least. So give us a list of the things that normally, you know, in, in an average household that you would compost. Okay. So all your produce, uh, coffee grinds, tea bags, the coffee filters themselves, um, any kind of um, paper towel, paper napkins, those will break down as well. Newspapers, really? wood shavings, um, um, 
So leaves. paper paper towels. Yeah, as long as they don't have you know, you can if you get a, a real like a brown one or a natural one that's been recycled, that'll go in. Yeah. Okay. Um, grass clippings, your newspapers, um, okay. just plain newspapers, uh, small sticks of an inch or less that helps aerate to okay. keep it builds air like builds a, air. Yeah, yeah, you just layer them in there. Uh, wood chips, straw, and hay that hasn't gone to seed. You want to avoid uh, invasive species and uh, diseased uh, plants. I wouldn't put commercial floral arrangements in there because they've been treated with fungicides. That's not really good for compost. Oh. Um, you don't want to put in um, anything that's been applied with a pesticide. Okay. So keep that out. Um, nor pet feces or their bedding should go in there. Okay. So the things that if you're doing it at home, you cannot put in meat or bones. Mm -hmm. It says fish scraps, so fat. Um, so Solid or liquid shouldn't go in your so compost. What about things that have olive oil on them? A little bit, that's okay. But I mean, you're not gonna dump your leftover bottle of olive oil okay. into the compost bin. All right. Um, you know, and then in dairy products, yeah. so no Milk, yogurt, yeah, cheese. a little milk, but you're not going to put a whole bunch of it in there. Okay, yeah. I mean, if it's you're going to so switch if you out have a salad and you have a little left dressing over, on it, you can throw it in there. Yeah, that's but, fine. Okay, yeah. Um, persistent weeds or weeds that have gone to seed, because the, the seeds are going to sprout in your garden when you put the compost back out on your garden. So you want to avoid things that have already sprouted okay. in and have a lot of seeds. Okay. Um, or or disease, because the, the the compost bin isn't going to get in a high enough temperature to break down the the pathogens on that. So when you get that put together, you're going to layer, you need to have a, a 30 to one ratio of carbons to nitrogens. Okay. So carbons are browns. Those are your, that we talked about, um, newspapers, yeah. your um, pine shavings or wood um, uh, sticks, okay. your uh, leaves, um, dried plants, if they're all dried out, that becomes mm -hmm. a brown. Okay. To your greens, then would be all your produce, all your food scraps. And what was that ratio again? It's a they say a thirty to one, which is actually three to one. You're gonna you're gonna look at um, how much nitrogen versus how much carbon you have. But okay. what you want to do is just keep in mind you're gonna have for the 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 amount of volume of browns mm -hmm. in, to greens is gonna be three to one. Okay. So you're gonna layer them. So you're gonna put you're gonna make sure there's stuff in the bottom mm -hmm. and put your greens in and then layer on browns. Oh, okay. And you want most of, most of your moisture to come from the produce or the, the wet food that you're putting in, but if there isn't enough, you can add a little water to it or uh, you know, even take a milk carton that's had a little milk into it because it's got a little bacteria in it and rinse it out into the, the yeah. So uh, is that the tumblers, how do those work? Is that um, you're just, aerating it or a little of both um yeah you're aerating it um with a tumbler like that because you don't have any outside influence if you throw in a little potting soil or your own soil first that will help that move it along creates yeah. that ratio it helps to yeah okay. yeah because you're not you're not having any outside influence because it's in a, it's above the ground it's contained and there's no other um bacteria source Think of like a, a source right. starter of like uh, bread, you know? Yeah. You have a yeast starter. You need yeah. some kind of starter when you're having a bin where there's no outside influences. Okay. You want to keep your compost bin away from the garden because the garden pests will come into your compost bin. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, a couple feet away from um, the house and mm -hmm. fencing and, and other things. Um, you want to keep it mindful by listening to your nose, <laughs> how does it smell? If it's smelling foul, then you need to aerate it and add more carbons add more. to it. Okay. Um, people say, well, I've got too many bugs. Well, I mean, flying insects, yeah. more carbon is needed okay. to cover it up. Um, but you, could don't, you don't have to do a whole lot of, to it if you don't want to. That's what's nice about this. It's, if you want to get involved in it and manage it, you're going to turn over a load of compost sooner. Right. But if you're just kind of letting it go, especially in the wintertime, you're not going to want to schlep yeah. out there and yeah. throw it out there in your boots and it's yeah. two feet of snow. You can throw it out there if you want or take the compost and put it in your freezer. Really? Yeah, just put it in your freezer and then pull it out whenever you want. And, and then I guess that's the next question is what, what do um, most people use the compost for? Um, is it, do they use it or does it just go back into the earth? Well, 
both. <laughs> you could use it for house plants, your garden, uh, sprinkled on your lawn, um, share it with a neighbor, but you can also just leave it there if you're not going to use it. You know, put it back into the woods if you have a, mm -hmm. you know, some trees behind you. Um, generally, you want to use compost when it's finished pretty quickly. You know, it starts to, doesn't have the nutritive value if it's exposed to the air after a okay. while. You keep it, like I've got this, lose. I have some compost here, mm -hmm. which, you know, is a finished bit of compost. I did not make this cat, Buxton did, but it's, it has a consistency when you touch it. It c clumps together a little bit, but it feels no more damp than a damp sponge. No. And that's, that's the amount of moisture content that you want, like 50, 60 percent moisture content. Guess we should have had some uh, towels or something. <laughs> <laughs> and it smells, what's it smell like to you? Dirt. Yeah, it smells like earth. And that's what a finished compost will smell like. It doesn't smell like your old food scraps. No, <laughs> it not really at just all. smells like earth. And then it can be put on house plants. And how long do you think it took to get to this state? This, I, she, I, you know, a few months maybe. I haven't okay. asked her how much it took to make this, but you can see there's, there's very little food stuff left no. in it. it. It looks like you just dug up some dirt. Yeah. It, it, it actually looks um, almost like a cross between mulch and um, like potting soil that you would buy. Yeah, yeah. And this would be something you mix with potting soil, kind of in a 50-50 um, mixture when you are, you know, using it for your plants or landscaping, you know, that sort of thing. But it's, um, it is something that you, you know, use all over the house. But the things that right. influence the composting process, there's a lot of variables. So I can't mm -hmm. say, you know, sure. we're going to get an X yeah. amount of outcome because of this. Right. You know, you have carbon and nitrogen content. If um, you can go online and go real deep in the woods about this, yeah. take a Vermont master's composting course right. to learn more about it. Um, understanding the size of particles. You cut up your produce into small pieces like I do, you're going to get the compost to turn over quicker than if you just try to chuck in a whole apple and an orange, yeah. which takes a long time to break down when you got the and I think I think for the average person watching, it's for, for a lot of us, this is going to be a shift. You yes. know, we're so used to just throwing everything into the garbage can and it's taken away and somebody else deals with it. And I think that what this is teaching us is that we have to be much more active participant in what we're purchasing and what we're throwing out and what we're doing with it. And, you know, um, this goes right alongside with the recycling piece that if we're not reducing, then the problem is just going to continue to grow. Right. Exactly. I, a long, I have one other question. How much... Um, Will composting um, reduce the landfill waste? Do we have a sense of that? I understand about a third of the, the waste that we're putting in the landfill right now is food, I think. It's about that. Interesting. Um, I have another source of composting here I'm happy to share that yeah, are my why friends. Why don't we take a look Hudson at that? Hudson Naps that have donated the use of their Verma composting bin, which is basically using worms to do the composting for you. And it's a great opportunity to use composting in your house. It's very small space confined. It takes up little space, very little management, and it turns over compost much quicker if you want. Um, red wiggler worms, which are the worms that are used for these um, units. And you assured me that no worms were gonna escape. No, they this. don't take off. It's, uh, <laughs> it's great, and they consume um, half to a whole amount of their weight every day. So if you have a pound of red wow. wigglers, it, they could eat up to a pound of waste every so day. So where does you. somebody get red wiggler worms? Well, places <laughs> where that sell bait can sell you red wigglers. Okay. You don't want like worms out of your garden though. Those are not the kind of not worms. the right worms. Did you know that worms are not native species to this country? I did right. not know I that. I didn't know that either. Too. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but they so, also, you okay. can get them online some places, <laughs> but um, you can get like a pound of worms set them in here and line it. First of all, you want to put it so it, it has a place to drain because okay. they're going to, you know, drain out. You're going to have a screen to drain out their castings, which is their feces. And that's what <laughs> becomes the compost, actually. And so it looks like dirt. eating it and then dispelling That's it. right. That's right. Okay. And, and it's, I think and that's a nice television way of saying that. And they're burying it, they're buried under a pile of shredded uh, newspaper. So you can take your sh newspaper and put it okay. through a paper shredder and just layer lots of paper with your um, worms. 
Um, some suggest to put your worms in there with a little food and then leave them for two weeks to kind of get them to acclimate because this is a different environment for them. And then after two weeks, they'll, they will take food scraps readily um, every day. And are they um, reproducing? Yes. So yes. they're their population is yes. growing. Yes, and you can then share your worms with neighbors to get okay. them started or put them out in your garden. You know, it's okay, but that's, you know, if you get too many. Um, but okay. that's, that's really... So how do you want to show this? Well, we've got a camera here on, and I'm just going to lift the lid here. And essentially it is a mixture of newspaper shredding and food scraps that you see here. And, oh, most of the worms have relocated. They've gone down. But if you look underneath, okay. they are moving all around, and they're creating their own castings. But you can see the food in here. You're brave. Oh, yeah. Well, my hands are washable, you know. They're just doing their work. And then underneath all this, while well, they're busy working on this, mm -hmm. we cover up. You notice there's holes poked in here yeah. and throughout the sides here so that they, they can breathe because that's part of the aeration process. Okay. Lift up underneath and this is where their castings end up. You can screen all this off if you don't want to see seeds and things like that. So this process you're saying is much quicker than the natural, yeah, uh, the regular outdoor composting. Okay. Yeah, it does move along in a quicker cycle. Yeah. And also, is this an indoor um, yes. So it can be done in a pantry closet. It can, you know, some people, you know. So this is really good for people. In urban a, living. Yes. Uh, very popular. Know. Okay. And some people and do both, actually. They'll do outside and indoor, too. Like, uh, especially in the winter months, mm -hmm. they want to compost inside. They continue to c create compost. Their outside one has kind of gone to sleep because of the temperature right, difference right. and it just freezes it doesn't do anything so um what about the smell I, I would imagine that people would worry about having compost in the house like that this usually doesn't have a smell issue if you're getting a lot of bugs sometimes it's just time that you just got to chuck it and start over because okay. it, it depends on how it goes but okay um you can usually get you know most of it taken care of by keeping it well covered with um the newspaper, the newspaper. yeah and um, I think that that also is a piece for um, people just keeping the compost scraps in the house before they either put it out in the backyard or bring it to the dump. Um, are the, I'm sure that there must be all sorts of gadgets and tips on how to manage all of that. Yeah, I use, I use an old ice cream, like a a one or two gallon ice cream bucket, you know, the, the cheapy ice cream, you peels back oh, or whatever, yeah. the top, yeah, and I use that and you just put a little, um, your browns at the bottom being leaves or sawdust or um, newspaper shavings to absorb the food and that kind of absorbs some of the odors as well. And then I go out every few days and throw it in the compost pile. Um, but to answer your question, there's, it's, it's just a matter of uh, what you want to do with the compost. Um, there. Mm -hmm. There are compost solutions that are actually like electronic that you can do that are on a countertop that create oh. not actually finished compost, but pretty darn near it. It's an amendment. You can break it down. Um, oh. that looks like a bread machine. You put your food in and it breaks Push it down. A button and yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you can just kind of chuck it outside so it doesn't. You probably connect it to an app on your phone. <laughs> 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 Someday, if not already, right? Yeah, there's all those options, but it's 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 a world that you know we're all learning to explore more um, yeah. and and getting understanding. There's there is so much to talk about, and you know I when we have these conversations, my mind is going 100 miles an hour because I'm like I have so many questions, and and um, I I think it's interesting. I I'm hoping that next time we do this, um, we can continue the conversation and, and I can um, ask, you know, some of the, some of my questions are, you know, the bigger picture issues, like why is there so much plastic in the oceans and, mm. you know, what can we be doing to help prevent that and, and uh, it's just unbelievable to me that, um, you know, some of the pictures that we see and um, I worry whether I'm contributing to that without knowing and um, so. Um, I, I just I find it interesting and I know that since our last show um, I've thought a lot more about what I'm 
recycling and what I'm not recycling, you know, like taking the lids off of things and... Yeah, I had people um, stop me on the street and yeah. one, one person stopped me at a wedding and said, so do I keep the labels on the cans? <laughs> I know, I know, <laughs> yeah. but it's really yeah. interesting and I think people, I forgot to bring my little bag of tricks. Oh, next um, time. I have, yeah. I have a couple more questions, but uh, we had gone camping and I, I put the water jugs in the recycling and uh, my boyfriend said, um, you're supposed to take the lids off of it. Paula said you're supposed to take the lids off. It's of okay. That, that, the and machines I said, will I am take the... not crawling back no. into no. that bin to get, <laughs> to get to fish the... you out. No. <laughs> so we got a, a good laugh out of That's that. Right. But um, it's really it does make you rethink, and I think that that's so important. Um, so this composting thing is going to be a big change for everybody, and yeah. we need to be prepared. So hopefully we can continue the conversation and learn more. I'm not sure I'm going to go ahead with the worm uh, thing. Yeah, it's not for everybody, yet. but that's nice but, that we have so many different. I mean, people I know compost in a garbage bag, so you can yeah. do that too. It's very, it yeah. is, it and and it's um, it, it's all about reducing the waste, and mm -hmm. and I think it's important that we're having the conversation. So. Yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. And hopefully we'll Thank be you. able to have another episode of Trash Talk with Lisa and Paula soon. Yes. All yes. right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.